Hi guys, this is that go. You know, I grew up in the 50s and the 60s. And as I was growing up, there were jukeboxes all over the place. They'd play the music, all your 78s, 45s, all that stuff. All the jukeboxes at any restaurant. And whenever we'd go out, you know, first thing I would do, I'd get into the place once we find a place to sit down and I'd get my mom or dad to give me a quarter run out to the jukebox or if you were at one of the tables where they had a wall box or you could order your selections right at the table you're at some of them you could even play the music there but it would come out a remote out from a jukebox but what I would normally do most of the time you'd find a jukebox out there and you'd go and you'd pick out the songs you want you get three songs for a quarter so you'd hear the music that you like and would be played all through the restaurant. I just love those old jukeboxes. And when I was a kid in the 60s, my dad bought a used Wurlitzer 1015 model. That came out of a restaurant that was closing. He got it for 25 bucks and took it down into the basement. My dad would take all his old 78s and he had quite a collection of stuff from the 30s and the 40s and he would put them on to this jukebox and we'd play those and my sister and I would sit there and listen to all his songs. Back in 1968, towards the end of the year, we moved to another state and we sold the jukebox for another 25 bucks. And of course, uh, that's the last time we ever had a jukebox. Now, 2000s now, when I am the age that my dad was at the time, maybe I was even older than that. And I wanted to set up a game room. One of the things I wanted to have in there was that old Wurlitzer in there. So I thought, let me see if I can find one. I didn't realize that that Wurlitzer 1015 is a very collectible unit restored it's worth about ten thousand dollars if it's not restored it's five thousand dollars so I said no nah, I just can't do that but I wanted to make sure I had one that you could see the records play and I I didn't want just a console like the ones that came out from the late 60s and the 70s I wanted the 50s or early 60s where you could still see the records playing and I found this Seaberg from 1960 that I bought at a auction I had to restore it, needed a lot of work, had a friend of mine to help me with that and uh, it took me about uh, I'd say six months to get it completely restored. But when I was done, uh, put it into the living room and said that's going to be the anchor of my gamer. And before I knew, I had all the old stuff of the living room taken out of there, cleaned it out and then here's my game room from around 2006, 2007, about that time, and started setting up my game room. As you can tell, after a while, that same space looked like this. <laughs> and I've got everything in that room now full. I've got the pinball machine. I got all kind of stuff to make my game room in there. But still, the most important thing that started this whole thing was the jukebox. Now, I started collecting these as models, so I couldn't afford or even have space for any more full-size jukeboxes. But I started looking for some of the models of some of the jukeboxes. And what I'm going to show you is uh, what I have acquired over time, and these are my jukeboxes. So let's take a look at them. Alright, well, different spaces of my game room. The one I really wanted to have first was one that looked like the old 1015 Wurlitzer. I actually found this one at a uh, airport one time. <laughs> and I had to order it and got it there. I think it was like 150 bucks or something. And what really got me with that thing is that it had, uh, not only it had Wurlitzer on it, but it also had the bubbles along the side. Now I remember our old Wurlitzer 1015 when I was a kid. It had the bubbles too. and when I saw this to bring back those memories I had to have one that would have the bubblers in it. So I've got this now and it's got a CD in there so I play some old songs on there that I had my dad had had. I have fun. I really like that one. It's very pretty. 
So let's look at another part of my game room. So if you look, I've got a Juke Master. Now if you guys know what that is, great. But if not, what it was, it was a, it's a replica of the old Jukebox wall box for a Seaberg. Uh, probably this one came out around 60, 61. Now what this company did in the 2000s, they did this as a replica. And there's seen a lot of these where you could have a cassette in there and even some have a CD. But what was really cool about this one is you can put your own songs you want in there. Uh, put up to a hundred different songs. And you can select exactly which one you want out of that. Just the way you used to use from the buttons. If you wanted D6, it would pull up that song from D6. And that's cool. I got that all around... When those came out around, I don't know, 2008, something like that, I bought one, and I've loved that thing. All right, so I look around over the other part of the game room. Looks like an old Wurlitzer. I didn't say Wurlitzer on it, though, but it uh, it's a CD player. You can't select anything on there. You would just play the songs you wanted, but it is a CD player. I think it also has a AM, FM radio in it, and I love the colors of it, the lights in there with the kind of the lime type green colors so I like that all right if you look over on the other side of my game room I have an old model of a, about a, like a 1956 57 Seberg now this is actually a cassette and an AM FM in there but it just looks cool with those early 50s type models of the Seabergs now this is really interesting. If you look over at this one, this is kind of an odd one here. Looks again, you know, I like those ones that look like the old Wurlitzer. It says Wurlitzer on there. And it's not that big. It's probably like um, 12, 14 inches high. It's not a radio. It's just a tape player. But it only uses its own tapes. If you look in the drawer, you'll see all the little tapes that come with it. And it has these tiny little tapes in there. But they're a, a real song uh, with the original artist in there. And it plays through the entire song. And they're really cool. And you put that in that little machine. And it's set up where you could set in a uh, coin in there. And when you put the coin in, it'll start playing your song. I really like that little thing. I've had that quite a while. And it's, uh, it's a cool thing to have. Alright, now if you look one part down towards one of my sides of the game room. I do have these little miniature model jukeboxes. They're made pretty well. But they are small. I think they got they play a song or two inside. You can't do much. You can't select anything. It's just cool. Like that one looking like that, that early 50s uh, AMI Continental. One of the most sought after jukeboxes. There's one that I bought too that looks just like my Seaberg that I have. And then here's another miniature model. They're just cool and I got them in different places in the room. And that's pretty much what I have in my game room. If you look into across into my family room, you know I generally don't have any of my collections outside of my game room. But I do have this one little corner of the family room. We saw this little model jukebox when we were at Target one time. It's for sale. And my wife said, uh, hey, you ought to get that. That'll look real good in your gamer. She said, no, I don't need it. It's all it is is an iPod. I don't need that. She said, no, no, you need to get that. So I did. I did bought it, and it turned out I love it. But I've got it in the family room, which my wife didn't like that at first. But I told her I needed it in there because I've put external speakers on there. I've got uh, two Bose 301s and two Bose 201s on there and the four speakers really fills up that family room with music. I play this all the time. I've got my iPod full of uh, my old music, thousands of songs in there. So I just use the remote and I'll sit in at the sofa and just keep in them one after another and if I like it I play it. If not I go to the next one. And I use this quite often. It's worked out really well. Then I go down in the basement that I call my shop, but I have a couple little spots of things in there from my collections as well. And I actually got another one of those iPods. 
Now actually I bought this not too long ago. I've had the one that you saw in the family room. I've had that quite a few years. But I didn't realize that when these first came out, these iPod players had a, a bubbler on them that looked like a Wurlitzer. They didn't have them too often with the bubblers because they had a lot of trouble with them. And they stopped doing that and just used uh, LED lights instead. Uh, I didn't even know they had the ones with the bubbler in it. But when I saw one once on eBay, I had to get it. And fortunately, it didn't cost me that much more because people didn't realize uh, the difference between that one and, and the LED one. So I ordered that uh, on eBay and uh, works great and I love it. It's down in the basement now. And then on the other side of my basement, I've got, uh, I found another Juke Master. And I just got this just a, a few weeks ago at Craigslist. And I put all the songs that I wanted on that and made my own title strips for it. So now we're in the basement. Uh, it's kind of cool to pick out a few things in there as well. Okay, well that's pretty much it. Now here's a little back of my overview of my game room. And it's pretty much full the way I want it right now. I have changed my game room three times since I started all this in 2006. Each of those three times I had uh, probably got rid of about a third of things and changed the style or the theme. But right now what I've got is what I like and I might stay here for a couple years before I have to change it again. So anyways I would just show you what this little collection I have and hope you uh, kind of enjoy it. Alright guys well that's it. Talk to you another time. This is Atco. Signing off.